Well, hello there, Pathway students. This is Mrs. Lomas. It is very nice to be chatting with you again and to realize we are wrapping up your junior year. I'm sure it's not in quite the way any of us had anticipated. Nevertheless, we are wrapping it up together and that's what matters. We are getting ready to put some of those real world skills into actual use. I'm very excited for you at this time, especially if you were able to attend the live session with Mr. Farrell and Mr. Carlin out of Wayne County Risa, our two career counselors who took time out of their day to be our guest speakers. Mr. Farrell has provided you with his email and his phone number information so that you can reach out to him through a phone call, a text message, or an email at any time to ask for assistance with regard to career counseling. He also provided you with so many relevant and current resources for the college and job market during his presentation. And what's really great is if you either were unable to keep up with his presentation and couldn't quite write everything down in a timely fashion or you were unable to attend the meeting, it has of course been recorded and posted on Classroom. So you will be able to go back, rewatch the entire meeting or watch only sessions of the meeting that you feel you need to watch again, look at his slideshow, look at his resources and make sure that you use them, especially for what we are about to do. So let's get started. You have already been working on your personal inventory. And that's great because it's those four worksheets that basically fill out information about yourself, which, you know, who do you know better than yourself, right? So you have written down a whole bunch of useful information that has now been returned to you. And you are going to use the information on those worksheets to create your resume. So what I want you to notice is that, of course, right here, on Classroom under Career Exploration is everything you need to create your final resume as well as your final list of references. So let's take a look at some different samples. You're going to notice that I have decided to include three student samples and I'm going to click on the first one just to give you an idea of what it might look like for you. So you look on the first student sample and you just scroll down, kind of eyeball the entire document, okay? Now let's go back. Up here in this area, all right, you want to notice that the first and last name portion of your resume is larger than the rest of it. And that is an excellent rule of thumb to follow. You may even decide to make your first and last name bold. You may even decide to make your first and last name a different color. So why don't we go with something that is very pleasant on the eyes and we'll go with like a, a nicer shade of blue. Now, I want you to keep in mind that when you select a color for your name, it should be something that is pleasing to the eye. Obviously, we don't want to go with yellow. It's too hard on the eyes and it's very difficult to see on a computer screen since so many businesses are now having you upload resumes digitally. Colleges are starting to do that as well. So yellow is simply not going to work and it especially does not work if you end up printing your resume and handing it in to someone. So we want to, again, stick with something that is a bit more pleasing, such as a softer shade of blue or even a softer shade of green. Nothing that's terribly harsh. If you remember anything from your 10th grade English year, think back to the symbolism unit where we discussed color and what the colors green and blue are supposed to create inside of someone who is exposed to those colors. 
The other thing that I recommend with regard to your first and last name is if you are the kind of person who likes to use your middle initial or even your middle name, put it on there. But always remain professional and make sure that you are using your full first name. So again, my husband's name is Michael. He would never include on his resume his shortened version of Mike or Mikey because that's just not professional. He can certainly introduce himself at the interview as Mike, but on his resume, it should read Michael. Then we move on to this section, your objective. Oh, and my mistake, let me go back for just a moment. I want you to notice everything that is listed up here, okay, which would be your address, including your city, state, and zip code, and then a phone number. Now, this particular student had a cell phone number. I'm assuming that most of you have one of those. <laughs> if you don't and you have just a landline, that is perfectly fine. You would just put in the parentheses here. You could either write landline or you could write home because then you are indicating to this person that it is not a cell phone, which again is perfectly fine. And then I want you to take a look at this student's email. I typed it in for the sample as last name first initial at gmail.com. We have not really had a chance to discuss your voicemail or your email. So let's talk about those for just a moment. When you have a message on your voicemail, you want to be very clear. Okay, guys and gals, here's the deal. You are young and it is extremely possible that when your friends call your cell phone, your voicemail says something like this. Yo, 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 what up? You know what to do with the beep. Okay, I admit that was pretty lame. And you're probably laughing right now and you need to stop the video for a moment so that you can wipe the tears out of your eyes. Say a little prayer for me because you feel sorry for me and move on. But here's the bottom line. You are now trying to get into some sort of college program, internship, the military get a job, whatever it is that you are trying to do, you want to make sure that you are leaving or rather using a professional sounding voicemail message. So you want to say some sort of nice greeting that includes your first and last name and how you will get back to this person just as quick as you can. With regard to your email, your email also needs to be professional. If your current email address is spunkymonkey at you know, yahoo.com or I am so hot at gmail.com, whatever, that's not going to cut it. I'm really glad that you're having fun with your email address and I'm really glad that you feel so confident about yourself, but that is not going to work when you are trying to get into a program or a job. So for the purposes of having a professional email, you know, email is free. Why not just set up a completely different email account that is only related to your professional life and make sure that it is something like this, where it's your last name, first initial at gmail.com. Or it could also be, let me just show you, if I go to student sample number two, it could be last name, first name at gmail.com or at sbcglobal.net or at yahoo.com, whatever it is that you have, okay? That's what I want you to keep in mind. So again, as long as you are dealing with something professional, you're going to be in good shape. Now we move on to our objective, all right? You might be looking at this objective and thinking, wow, this sounds like an adult's resume. This student already wanted to become a police officer with the eCourse Police Department. So let's talk about a couple things regarding your objective. First of all, we'll go back to classroom and we will look at the document entitled Sample Resume Objectives. I'm not going to read these to you. I am going to highlight and point out a couple of important ideas behind these objectives. You are going to begin your objective with this phrase. 
you are going to begin with to obtain a position and then fill in the blank as in with to and select one of these or create your own. So going back to my student example, this student decided to say to obtain a police officer position. So let's stop there for a moment. Right here, he or she decided to insert police officer up here within this part of the objective and then pulled out some ideas from these samples. To obtain a police officer position with eCourse Police Department in order to better the community using social perceptiveness and critical thinking skills. Well, if you go back to my samples, there really isn't anything on here that is quite like that. So what he or she did was pull different ideas from different objectives to create an objective that fit his or her resume. So let's talk about this for a moment. If you are going to use this resume, to try and land a real job right now, let's say at Stroh's Ice Cream in Wyandotte, or at Applebee's, or with A&J Lawnscaping, uh, I'm sorry, Landscaping Lawn Service this coming summer, then your objective needs to fit the job that you are trying to get right now. Or perhaps your objective needs to fit the program into which you are trying to become a member for some sort of summer program through a college, or you want to get a head start on that application process. That's fine. But if you just want to use this resume assignment as practice, then you can create an objective that is assisting you with trying to get your dream job. Gee, Mrs. Lomas, someday I really want to be a police officer. And so I'm going to create a resume right now that puts that as my goal so that I can turn it into you and you can let me know whether or not I did a good job with that. That's great, guys and gals. Perfectly fine. Okay. So create the objective to match something that you want to do someday or something that you want to do right now working for the summer, getting into a college program, et cetera, et cetera. And don't forget that it is perfectly okay for you to go through each one of these examples and to pull different words from different examples to create one objective. Following your objective section comes your education. So we can see here that this particular student attended two different high schools. He attended Theodore Roosevelt High School. She attended Ecorse High School. He or she has attended two different schools. Student sample number two attended only Roosevelt High School, so then decided to also include his or her middle school. And then student sample number three Just going to move a couple of tabs around. All right, there we go. Has attended only Roosevelt High School and then, of course, Wilson Middle School. So when we look at these three resumes, they are set up very differently from each other. And that is perfectly acceptable. It is acceptable because there are so many different resume templates out there online that you could look at and see which one works for you, or you can simply design your own. And that's what I want you to keep in mind. Don't be afraid to go to, let's say Google, and type in resume, ah, there it is, resume template, resume builder. Customize your resume with our free templates. Okay, that's the first one, so I'll just click on that. First one that came up, free professional resume templates. And you are now going to see that the world of resume templates offers you so many different looking resumes. I mean, look at what they've done to this person's name and how there's extra ink at the top to make all that information stand out. 
or they took this person's name and you know put her name is Jessica Claire and put the initials in this really cool circle and then set up different skills and whatnot. This is something that is more traditional looking. Again, there are so many different templates out there that you are welcome to explore. I encourage you to do that. If you decide, Mrs. Lomas, I don't need to do that at this time, not a problem. You are welcome to go ahead and just use the blank document that I have for you here, which does have some instructions. So you'll click on it, you'll read those instructions, and then of course go from there. Or like I said, you can go back and you can easily research, is there another template that I would prefer to use? And sometimes these templates that you would prefer to use really fit very well with whatever it is that you are trying to pursue. So if you, you know, this one right here looks a bit more traditional and that might work for now with a more traditional type of college program or job. But if you are someone who is trying to be uh, maybe a bit more creative or a bit more flair, you really want to catch someone's eye, then you might want to go ahead and design something that stands out just a little bit has a little bit more pizzazz. But getting back to our student samples, you will notice that all this student did was center his or her information, okay? Use different size font for his or her name to stand out. Some of it's in bold. And then right here, hit that, that enter key to create space between personal information and the objective. And then of course did it again between the objective and education. And then continued creating space between each new educational reference. Each of these students did that each time. This student inserted these lines. Again, just to draw a little bit of attention to the way the resume is organized. This student decided to use these types of bullet points, which you can certainly set up if you would like. That's not a problem, okay? This student here used these kinds of bullet points. This student here didn't really use any except to highlight certain parts of the programs that he or she was completing or activities in his or her experience. So again, the one thing you have to remember about your resume is to be consistent. This student put the name of his or her high school and underlined it with an address, and then the other high school with an address, as well as the month and the year and the dates when the student was attending these schools. Let's stick with education for just a moment. There is something I want you to notice that all three students have in common. They have this in common, that phrase right there, diploma pending, and then they write June 2020. Because technically, this particular student, all three of these students, their samples are from last year's class, and they are graduating next month. And that is what you need to put in your high school section of your resume. Diploma pending June 2021, because of course that is when you are graduating. That lets any potential college program or potential employer know this is where you are with your schooling. Because clearly, if we are following any type of a traditional school schedule, you would be unavailable to work September through June, Monday through Friday during the day. You're also giving a hint as to the kinds of experience that you have. So an employer would be more forgiving and understanding that you are young and still relatively inexperienced. And that is perfectly okay. You will also notice that each of these students decided to jot down some sort of 
information regarding the program that each student was following at his or her school. Letting the employer know or the college program know, this is where I excel. This is the kind of student I am. This is what I enjoy taking. So you don't necessarily have to be taking an advanced class or an honors class, but it's a really good idea to list those kinds of classes as well as anything that you feel could possibly make you unique, such as how many foreign languages you've taken, or if you've specialized in something like this student has, such as TV and radio, maybe you're an art student, et cetera, et cetera. Next, you're going to see that each of our students has moved on to awards. And this student listed a couple of different awards, depending on middle school and high school. This student had received some awards that at this point were a little older, but they certainly worked to allow people to know, hey, I have earned awards in my lifetime. This student's awards were a bit more current. But once again, I want you to notice the spacing, and I also want you to notice the consistency. This student has labeled each section with a word that is in all capitals. It is bold, followed by a colon, each and every time. This student is labeling each section with a word that is in all capitals, and that is in bold, no colon. This student has decided to label each section with a bold word that is not capitalized, no colon, perfectly fine. There's, there's nothing wrong with that, nothing whatsoever. Now, I will point out that this student, unfortunately, missed the boat, so to speak, and did not list an objective, whereas these two students did. So you want to make absolute certain that the first thing on your resume is your objective and that it does end with a period. And then, of course, you move into your spacing and your consistency. Now we have our students listing experience, and this is where some of you may have had to become a little creative because you have not had, shall we say, a traditional job, and that's perfectly fine, okay? So let's take a look here. Student number one did some sort of landscaping. He or she did not name the company, my guess would be it's because he or she did not work for an actual company, but was simply doing this at home. But rather than saying something like, I just cut grass at home, he or she called it landscaping and then listed when these activities were completed, where these activities were completed, as well as the types of things that needed to be completed. Same thing with student number two. He or she indicating I'm a seasonal worker as a babysitter or caretaker, but I'm also a seasonal worker as a, I'm sorry, this one was not seasonal, pardon me. I am a crew member at Tim Hortons. And then finally, this particular student working as a babysitter or caretaker in Wyandotte and also working as part of the botany program whoops, at Roosevelt. That can go under experience. Now something I want to point out to you is the punctuation. So let's take a moment to, to look at this. Again, it's all about consistency. So this student listed, I am a babysitter, and then in parentheses, caretaker, which is great. It's just a, an additional explanation. Where? In Wyandotte, Michigan. He or she does not need to list the specific address where the student is working. You will also notice that this student, it looks like this student babysits only during the summer because he or she indicated summer of 2015 to present and it is seasonal work. So it's very possible that this student was watching younger siblings. School's out for the summer, mom and dad are still going to work, 
mom or dad say, okay, kid, this is your job. You need to watch your brothers and sisters. Now notice that this student listed three things that he or she does with the kids, but used active verbs, which are listed in your slideshow. Entertain toddlers, perform nighttime routines, prepare meals. They are all present tense. This student is stating, I am doing these things right now with these kids, and that is perfectly acceptable. They match. It is consistent. Each item ends with a period. Same thing here. This student worked at Tim Hortons for about three months, October, November, December, and she or he made the verbs all match in past tense because this is something that he or she used to do. And again, listed three items, ending each item with a period. Once again, you are simply creating a document where you are making it look consistent with the way you have it set up, et cetera, et cetera. And then as long as you make it consistent, you are in good shape. You're getting all of this from your personal inventory. Now this student decided to end with experience and move on to references, whereas this student included skills as did this student. This particular student decided to list the fact that he or she is bilingual, and I'm actually going to fix this right now because when you speak Spanish, that's definitely a capital S, that he or she is bilingual, mature, responsible, and friendly. Those really, uh, the being bilingual is a skill, whereas these other three are more adjectives, but if the student were being interviewed, he or she could say, well, here's how I use my maturity, my responsibility, and my friendliness in my skill set. This student here decided to actually list active verbs and explain them. Like, yes, I can accept criticism. Yes, I take responsibility for my actions. Yes, I help people, et cetera, et cetera. Again, you want to make your skills section short and sweet. Should you decide to include it, I highly recommend that you include it because you are young and relatively inexperienced and it makes your resume fill out a little bit better. The last section of your resume is this right here. You will notice it in all three student samples because all three of these students listened to me. You are going to write references available upon request and you're going to end that with a period what you are telling your potential employer is that you have a list of people who are willing to say good things about you and so you do not do not do not list those references on your resume you are instead going to make a separate document for them but you must indicate on your resume that you do have access to said references. And that's it. It's a matter of consistency, lining things up, deciding on your format. As long as you follow this protocol, this kind of template, where you are looking at the order in which things are listed, you are looking at how consistent these people are with their punctuation, with their spacing. You are going to be just fine because you have access to the information on your personal inventory. And once again, you are also welcome to go to the internet and access a free template that would guide you through filling in your information. Once you are done, with this part and you get to the references available upon request section, you then need to go in and create a reference list. So I'm going to open up this, sorry gang, bear with me here, sample references, okay? On your personal inventory document, you were supposed to have written people that you know who would say good things about you. So I want you to ignore this part of your reference 
sheet for just a moment. Okay, let's just ignore that. Again, this is going to be a separate document. So you're going to see right here in the assignment, references template. So you'll open this up, there's a little bit of instruction, and then you will type your references on this blank document. I want you to take a moment to notice how I listed my references. Ironically, they do happen to be alphabetical. Adams, Hanover, Reginald. But that's not how I listed these references. I listed them according to how long I have known each person. So the people that you've known the longest should go at the top because that person is going to be able to give the most thorough background about you. So Dr. Veronica Adams, I've known for three years. Ms. Lori Hanover, I've known for one year. And Mr. Philip Reginald, I've known for four months. Now let's just say I knew both Veronica and Lori for three years. Okay, fine. Then it really doesn't matter whose name comes first. I guess in that case, I would want to list the person's name that I feel would definitely say the nicest things about me. And so if I knew Veronica and Lori for the exact same amount of time, three years, and I know for a fact that Lori is going to say much nicer things about me than Veronica will, I would put Lori at the top of my list. But I want you to notice what I've included. I have included this person's address, as well as this person's phone number, as well as this person's email. Because then that way, my potential employer has a variety of ways in which to contact any of my references and say, hey, what could you tell me about Mrs. Kelly Lomas? What about her character? What about her work ethic? How long have you known her? And in what capacity, et cetera, et cetera. Very easy way. Now, hopefully you have at least three people you can list, but if not, don't worry about it. Don't sweat the small stuff. Again, you are young and you are still relatively inexperienced. Obviously you wanna have at least one name, but if you can shoot for a minimum of two, that's your best bet. And of course, three looks amazing. Now this section right here, however you have this listed on your resume is exactly how it needs to look on your reference sheet. These are two different samples. That's why they don't match. So after you're done creating your resume, you can simply highlight and then you would hit control C to copy and you would highlight this and hit control V and there it is at the top of your reference sheet. You want your reference sheet text set up to match your resume. Now I'm going to undo this so that I can just keep the sample there for you. But I want you to understand that oftentimes when you go to some type of business and they take your resume from you and then they say to you, could you give us a list of references and you hand them this list, the documentation will sometimes get separated. And if it ends up getting separated, the best way for them to be able to find your sheet is to make sure that this matches your resume. And if it does, it's going to be much easier for your potential employer or college program to find. So now we go back to the entire classroom assignment and we see that within this whole section, you have student samples, resume objective samples, as well as your documents for your final copies. I am still in the process of tweaking some of the instructions on here, which I will do obviously before this assignment has been launched. And I want to make sure that you have access to everything. We have a lot of time to work on this. It is technically not going to be due until June. So you wanna make sure that you look at your due date on the assignment, that you look at the time, and that you remember when we are Zooming next 
so that you can go through and ask me any questions that you may have. I know that this way of teaching is not exactly ideal, and I am forever trying to find the silver lining. And the silver lining is this. This is a long video, right? And maybe you've had to pause it. Maybe you've had to go back and listen to something that I said twice. But the great thing is, is that you'll have access to it now at all times. So that as you are creating each of these items, you will be able to go ahead and perhaps come back to the video and say, what did she say again about the punctuation? What did she say again about the spacing? How did she say I should use my verbs? And you can go into that part of the video and refresh yourself on that information. But as always, write your questions down so that when we meet again, we won't waste any time. We can get right to the heart of your questions. Feel free to contact me with any concerns you may have. Keep up with your due dates as we finish out the school year. And I definitely look forward to meeting with you during our next Zoom session. In the meantime, get outside and get some fresh air as well. Take care.